This is not a message for everyone. This is a transmission for the star seeds, for those of you who know or suspect that you are something different, something unusual, not of this place. These are the messages for you that I, as the host of the Max Ante, are bringing to you. Don't expect anything here to make a lot of sense. Everything is entirely paradoxical and is for you to interpret and for you to discern what is true. The Goenka Vipassana machine, which is what it was, or what it is rather, is still so huge in the world today. This massive organizational machine that churns out millions of new meditators into the world. That was my life for over 20 years, about a quarter of a century. It completely guided all of my actions, all of my thoughts, my entire compass for living and what I was to do in the world came entirely from the Goenka organization. He laid out the way to live and we followed everything he said for us to do. It was so clear because the experiences that we had on these retreats were so radically transforming that if we were able to experience such an incredible inner transformation, then everything else he said, well, that must also be true. It just was like a fait accompli if he said this is how it was and we'd already experienced everything else then it must be true and so it was that i was in hook line and sinker up at the meditation center in those early days for me when i was still just a 20 21 year old i was helping out going up every weekend that i could and serving and cooking and cleaning and helping run the courses and being a manager there at the meditation centers and i would meet all these people who'd been already doing it for 10 20 even 30 years they'd done dozens and dozens hundreds of these retreats and to me they were the wisest most extraordinary people in the world i was just this 21 year old guy who had happened upon what seemed to be the key to life and they told me point blank that the thing to do was to either be completely celibate and devoted 100 percent to goenka's vision of making a world that was filled with vipassana meditators or get married and make a dharma family bring into the world some dharma babies because after all they were the angelic beings who wanted to arrive here and we were creating the fertile magical ground for them to arrive and lead a completely pure life we were going to give these new babies the first shot that was ever available to truly bring about the buddha's perfection of enlightenment into this what was clearly becoming a crazier and crazier world and so i was lit up fully inspired i felt like perhaps being celibate was a bit of a stretch but i could certainly find a woman and i could certainly marry her and i'm sure as hell that i could have one of these dharma babies and so i pivoted my entire orientation of life to that direction and within a couple of years i'd found myself a woman and yes within another year we were married and then there was the baby and so it was i was fulfilling upon all of my dharma ambitions and every year i was going off and doing retreat after retreat and once i found out about the longer courses see if you actually stuck to all of the rules and if you committed yourself to never drinking alcohol to never having any drugs and never lying and certainly never having sex with anybody other than your committed partner there was you know a few dozen things that we had to do but particularly the five major precepts and i was living them perfectly i had made sure i'd reviewed every aspect of my life and here i was to the very letter in my early 20s being a, an obedient very good dharma boy and that was all i wanted because what i really wanted what i wanted was the dharma promised land the nirvana that the buddha and Goenka especially spoke of. You see, Goenka very cleverly to 
turned this into a Dharma video game. And what do we have in a video game? We have points. And in this game that he'd explained to us, never calling it a game of course, there were these 10 pots of the paramis. You see, the paramis, you had to collect these, well, there's no other way to describe them, but points. And you got these points for certain activities. And so what you did in your life was you spent your whole life collecting all of these little goody goody points in each of your 10 jars. So while you collected the parami points, you also had to get rid of all the heavy bad Sankaras. So it was a complete point system game. What was having us being dragged down in the world of being an, a very you know, cravingly filled human was all these Sankaras that we carried from life to life. And what were these Sankaras? They were the reactions that we had to just about everything in life. And so this constant reactive nature that was running the human mind, it was perpetually creating a gazillion Sankaras every moment. And what was the antidote? Well, going to have it. And that's what he'd given us. He gave us this mechanical system of sitting every day and sweeping our attention through our body and feeling all the sensations. And through some kind of magical process, he explained to us that sweeping our mind through our body and feeling these sensations were going to eradicate the Sankaras. And we were going to be able to eradicate so many of these Sankaras that we were going to not just get rid of the ones that were arising in that moment, but we'd be getting rid of the storehouse. Because that's what he said. He said we had this mountain, a mountain bigger often than even Everest of these Sankaras. I don't know how we were able to sort of somehow have some sort of cosmic um, accounting system, but we apparently certainly did have it. And there we, and, and he said, oh, but it was confusing, a little bit confusing, because there was no actual ledger of who had what. So you had to kind of maybe guess, but clearly the people sitting further at the front of the room, and certainly those sitting on the pedestal who were teaching us, they were the ones who had less of the Sankaras and more of the Palmies. And if, even if life got tough for us, we were getting more of these Palmies because it wasn't about the toughness of the life, it was about our ability to persevere and to be equanimous. That was the key word here. The whole key phrase in the entire system that Goenka had delivered to us was being equanimous. If you could be equanimous with life's difficulties, you earned the goodies, you got the palmies. And even though the Sankaras were bubbling up from the difficulties, don't worry, you were eradicating them. And so while it was that I found myself in the most abysmal, depressing, horrific marriage that I could have even ever contemplated, every day was like the most nasty struggle for 15 fucking years I went through that but what got me through were all of Goenka's trips that he was sending me on all of these retreats him telling me that I just had to keep on getting through and doing another retreat and so it was that I switched my life around I actually lived for the retreats and while I had so many responsibilities of being a father, raising a family, having a wife, having a business, having employees, having all of those stresses, it was all worth it because once a year I got to get away for 30 days of silence. And so it was a trade-off, 11 months of agonizing pain and perseverance for the one month of freedom. And so it was I pushed myself through that for all of my 20s and all of my 30s. It was such a crazy ass trip and yet I was surrounded by everybody else doing the same thing most of my friends were also told to get married and I watched them persevere push through and I still had some a few little doubts because most of the time it looked like they were having a bit of a tough time it was kind of odd because people around me looked like they weren't really the healthiest people when I really looked at it um, they were often very sick and their marriages and relationships mm, I wasn't so sure if they were that happy in fact maybe I kind of had it even better than some but what we all lived for was we lived for the real prize and that was getting to India every year for the long course they had these incredible 
these 20 day and then these 30 day and then these 45 day seven week silent retreats that I just live for and you got to rise in the ranks once you got through one the next year you could go in for the longer one and so we were collecting our Dharma points we were collecting our palmies we were getting rid of our Sankaras and we were getting through each retreat proving to ourselves and everybody else that we were making the grade. It was like being in some Dharma factory where we got to have these little marks, these little um, badges of, of achievement. And that's what we were doing. We were achieving enlightenment. And this was something that was extraordinary because I felt so confident that I was going to be the one who was going to be enlightened. And thanks to Goenka, he was going to help me get there. The only problem was, it was all a big chunk. It was all a sham. And it was going to take me a quarter of a century to figure that out.